A card is randomly chosen from a regular 52 card deck. What is the probability of drawing a king? Now, this is fairly straightforward. You just have to re remember your counts. There are four kings in the deck, a regular deck of cards. out of the 52 total cards. So the probability of drawing a king if the deck is well shuffled and they're equally likely would simply be 4 out of 52. Don't forget to reduce the final answer is 1 13th. Second question related to this same situation. A card is randomly drawn again from a regular 52 card deck. What are the odds against drawing a king? Well, let me just remind you, we've already found from part A, from part A, we already know that the probability of drawing out a king from a well shuffled deck is 4 out of 52, which came out to be 1 out of 13. But now they're asking about odds. Now, as I've done in previous problems, when I do odds, I always do it at odds in favor, and then I'll change it to against when I'm done. It's just less confusing to me that way. And also remember that when I'm given a probability and I want to change it to odds, I always think probability is part to whole. It's the part you want over the whole. Whereas odds is, odds is part to part. So the implication of that, the way I think of it, I always divide the whole into two parts based on what the part is that I already have in the numerator. So whatever that is in the numerator, I write it down along with a plus sign, and then I add in whatever it takes to come back up with the hole at the bottom. So since there's a one up top, I'm going to, to, to partition the hole into one plus something, and obviously one plus 12 is going to be needed to get 13. Once I get that, the answer for the odds in favor is sitting right in the denominator. It's going to be involved the one and the 12. I've done this several times, but just keep in mind that when I'm going from probability to odds, I'm always going to do it this way. To me, it's simpler than going back to the formal definition of probability, uh, excuse me, of odds using the probability. I just like to break it up like this. To me, it's more intuitively clear what's going on. So in any case, once you get this broken up, you can write out the odds in favor. And then once you get odds in favor, you can switch the two and get odds against. So like I said, once you get the denominator broken up into its pieces, the odds in favor of drawing a king would just be 1 to 12. 1 to 12. But they didn't ask for that. So don't forget, and I almost made my own mistake, we haven't answered the question. They wanted the odds against. So the odds against Drawing a king is 12 to 1. And be prepared to write it that way. And sometimes they write it as a fraction. Or up here it would be 1 to 12. So be prepared to see it done either way. If you're looking at a multiple choice answer. Okay. Let's do another one. If 10 coins are flipped, what is the probability of obtaining, obtaining at least one head? Here's the way I think about it. First of all, drawing a tree diagram is pretty much out of the question. You can't draw, you're not going to draw a tree diagram 
um, for this problem too many branches but what I would do at this point is is rely on the intuition I've built up back when I maybe did draw tree diagrams with smaller numbers what I want to look at is the possible number of heads you could come up with in this scenario if you're flipping 10 coins the very smallest number of heads you could possibly get is zero you could get none the largest number you you could get if all of them came out to be heads you'd get 10 so the possibilities for the number of heads range everywhere between and including 0 to 10. Now they ask about the probability of getting at least one head. As we've talked about many times, at least one head in this in this case would mean one head or two heads or three heads or four heads or five heads or six heads or seven heads or eight heads or nine heads or ten heads. Now that means I have to calculate ten probabilities and add them up if I do it directly. And as we've discussed, that would take a very long time. At least one head. The only one that doesn't fit the description at least one head is no heads. That's zero. We know that the probability of the entire sample space, the probability of getting either 0, 1, or 2, or 3, or 4, or 5, or 6, or 7, or 8, or 9, or 10, is 1. So it makes much more sense to think of it this way using the complement rule. The probability that we get at least one head is always going to be 1 minus the probability that we get no heads. So it's much easier to calculate the probability that you get no heads, and then once you get that answer, subtract it from 1. Now, think about this. By the fundamental counting principle, there are 2 times 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 2 let's get it right 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 2 times 2 times 2 in other words 2 to the 10th which if you take your calculator out you'll find is 1024 there are 1024 total ways to flip 10 coins and come out with different things. Where you've got a head or a tail on each toss or each flip. But we're now looking for the probability. In other words, so going back up here, I know the answer is going to look like this. The probability of getting no heads is the number of ways to get no heads over the number of ways to get any flip of 10 coins, which you know is 1,024. So all I need to know now to be practically done is to figure out the number of ways to get no heads. But that's easy. Because think about the tree diagram that you're not going to actually draw. The only way you could get no heads is to go down the branch that said tail, 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 tail. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's the only one. There's only one way. So that means that you have a one here. So we're home free. So the probability that you get at least one head is 1 minus 1 over 1,024. And if you think of 1 as 1,024 over 1,024, you'll immediately see that that's 1,023 over 1,024. And even though I didn't write this in the original, they did want the answer given as a
completely reduced fractions, so there you have it. The probability of getting at least one head if you flip 10 coins is 1,023 over 1,024. Let's do another. What is the probability of getting either a heart or a queen when drawing a single card from a deck of 52 cards? Okay, we know there are 52 cards in the deck. We've dealt with that enough. But we're looking now for, for a heart or a queen. Now, there are 13 hearts, there are 13 diamonds, 13 clubs, 13 spades. So we know that there are 13 hearts. I mean, you've got the ace, the two, the three, the four, the five, the six, the seven, the eight, the nine, the ten, the jack, the queen, the king, and the ace. And there are four queens. There are the two black queens, the queen of, of uh, spades and the queen of clubs and then there are the two red queens the queen of hearts or the queen of diamonds and the queen of hearts now the thing is there are 13 hearts and 14 queens that's 17 cards but you've counted the queen of hearts twice so you always have to watch out for that so you've got to subtract off one there are 16 uh, unique cards from among the hearts and queens not 17 So you're practically done now. So the probability of, the, of a queen or a heart is simply the number of queens or hearts, which is 16, over the number of cards in the deck, which is 52. And now you just have to realize that 16 and 52 both divide by 4 and reduce your final answer to 4 thirteenths. So a couple of places where you could get careless, like miscounting and also not reducing, but otherwise a very simple problem. Let's do one more. If five cards are drawn from a well-shuffled deck of 52 cards, what is the probability that all five are black? Okay, this is very simple if you understand the concepts. The first thing is order here is not important. You don't care what order you draw the cards out in. You're going to draw five cards and hold them in your hand. You don't really care what order you got them in. And that implies that this problem is going to involve combinations. So that's the first thing. Now you also need to realize what the deck looks like. you got to think about it. They're asking about um, black cards. So the, the deck has 52 cards in it. Half are black. And half are red. So if you want to get a black card, you're going to have to draw it from the 26 cards that are black. So we know by the basic probability principle then that the probability that all five are black by the basic probability principle, it's the number of ways you can get five blacks over the number of ways you can get any five. And we've done enough of these problems, I hope by now that you almost can visualize in your head what the setup is going to look like. To count the number of, of blacks cards 
is a combination problem because you don't care about order. The count, the number of total cards that you draw, um, the number of possibilities for the total cards when you don't care whether they're black or not is a combination problem because the order doesn't matter. So the setup is going to look like that. You're drawing out five cards, so I know that in either case I'll be drawing five cards. But in the numerator of the basic probability principle, I'm given the, I need to calculate the probability that all five are black. So here I want to just put down, put in the possibilities of getting nothing but a black card. So if I, if I want to know how to draw five black cards, they've got to come from the 26 black cards. But down bottom, it's just the total number of ways where I don't care what the card is. So that comes from the total number of cards. So once you've done a couple of these, you see the pattern. It's a combination over a combination. The rightmost number in the combination is just how many you're drawing out. The leftmost number in the combination is what you're drawing from. So if you want only blacks, it's going to be 26. If you don't care which card color the card is, it's from the 52. So at this point now, it's just a matter of doing it. And I would suggest to do it on your calculator. Remember, the Shift-2 key is, for, is a combination key. So if you wanted to do that calculation on the calculator, you would put in a 26. Then you would do Shift-2. Then you would put in the 5. Remember, you have to... you. Uh, uh, excuse me, just drew one too many lines here. Then you want to divide that by hit the division key. Then you put in 52, hit your shift 2 for combination again. And then you enter your 5. And now you're really completely done with everything, so you have to hit equal to get the actual result. And if you do all that, and they also want it rounded to three decimal places. I didn't write that in up here, but I'll tell you now, they want the answer to three decimal places. And if you do that, you will get 0 0.025. So the probability of drawing five black cards from a deck of 52 cards well shuffled is fairly small, 0.025.